Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing an updated version of a video I did a year ago comparing the differences of Apple Logic and FL Studio. Now in the last version of this video I made, I just did like a pros and cons list of each software, but I didn't actually get in and show the software and the workflow. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show the instruments, different effects, different perks of each one, and what the general workflow looks like. This is gonna be great if maybe you have one software and you're looking to get the other, or maybe this is your first piece of software and you wanna start producing music. Either way, it'll be good to get a look into each one. So this is a comparison video first let's get into FL Studio so we're in FL Studio I'm gonna make this as quick as possible because I've recorded this a couple times and the video ends up being like 40 minutes so I'm gonna skip through some things and I'm just gonna show you the workflow there's this pattern editor there's this mixer and there's the playlist editor in the background here and then you've got all your files in the browser on the left here let's start by making a drum beat you do that by dragging sounds in from packs on the side these are the stock sounds. It's easy to get better sounds online. These stock sounds, in my opinion, are pretty bad, uh, depending on what kind of music you're making. But for the kind of like trap or hip hop and some of the pop stuff that I make, it doesn't work for me. I have a splice subscription, which is super cool. We'll just drag some drums in though. There's a kick. Let's get a nice little rim in here. I've already done this video a couple times and I keep re-recording it, so I already know what drums I'm gonna use and kind of how I'm gonna make this. Um, find some hi-hats. I don't remember what I used for that, but get an idea for what you're working with. Um, yes, yeah, I don't like this. These are kind of abrasive too. I like that open one. I can use that somewhere. And that's good enough for now. I usually do my drums in one pattern, then my hi-hats in another. You can just click on, you can drag this, as, make it as long as you want, but I usually do um, just these two bars or four bars. So here's a little two bar beat. Let's make a hi-hat loop. Let's see how that sounds. I'm going to turn down my hi-hats there. All right, so that's how you make a drum beat. Let's get into some of the instruments. There's three main players in FL Studio. 3X OSC is like the old school first synth that they made for FL Studio. Citrus is a pretty powerful synth that comes with most versions of FL Studio. There's different versions um, of FL Studio. I, I didn't mention that at the beginning, I should have, but I would stick with the producer or signature version. There's the fruity version, which is 100 bucks, and you can't record audio in it, which is it's it's not really worth your time. Start with the producer. You get um if you get to signature plugin bundle, you get a couple different things. It's a hundred dollars more. I think at three hundred producers two hundred. The signature bundle comes with gross beat, which is a pretty popular effect, and it comes with uh, a pitcher, which is kind of like FL's version of Auto Tune. Um, but let's get into Flex. Flex is one of my favorite synths. It's a newer and it's basically preset based, but you can change some of the macros here. And it sounds pretty good. And you've got some sample libraries. You can make pianos or get pianos, I mean, some synths, 808 basses. So let's, uh, I've got my MIDI keyboard plugged in here. Let's just record it. I've got my, th I'm going to add another pattern. And let's do it. I'm going to route that channel to eight. It's a little loud. I'm going to pull it down right away and I'm just going to play it. A lot of reverb on there. Let me dial that back. Cool. And then I'm going to add a bass. I'm actually going to go into citrus. I know there's a bass in here that I like presets sub bass two. And you can make all these adjustments here. This is an FM synthesizer. Um, I've gotten into synth design a little bit on this particular synth. It's pretty powerful and fun to work with. I'm going to make another pattern. Let's record some bass. Nope. 
Sounds pretty good. I want to make sure my bass is tight. So I'm going to go into quick quantize and let's see what that sounds. Sounds pretty good, you know, for a bass that we've spent three minutes on. I can live with it. I can hear it on the back of a behind a used car lot commercial on a hip hop radio station. You know, get your 2021 Cadillac Escalade SV10 or whatever. I don't really know what the Escalades come in these days. I want to show you a project that I've actually put some time into. Uh, this project, I cut the vocals in Logic, and I have another video on the difference of cutting vocals in FL Studio and Logic. Go check that out if you're interested in that, because I'm not going to be doing that in this video. I mean, So we'll load this up, and I use some different samples. I use some different um, loops, and it's a pretty simple beat, but it's pretty close to you know a solid demo, give you an idea of what a project will look like. All right. You don't want to run laps with the dude like me. You don't want to back to back with the dude like me. And I'm feeling kind of sad getting cold. I'm going to skip forward a little bit. If you trust more, you don't worry where I'm at because it's over. I'm well aware of how it is. All your children can't persist. Only truth come on my lips. Only truth come on my lips. And we'll use this opportunity to look at some of the effects that FL Studio has to offer. Uh, they're not bad. So for this particular project, I don't really have a lot going on as far as effects go, but I'll load some up. This is our main loop through it all that I chopped up. Um, one of the popular effects is gross beat, which will actually, actually work really well for this. It's this kind of chopping mechanism. This is really popular for like trap production. You'll you'll see this a lot. Different like stutters. One of the uh, more popular ones is if I go down to uh, pitch shifter. You hear this sort of stuff quite a bit. It's kind of a cool plugin. It only comes with the signature version, I believe, of FL Studio, the $300 version. Um, I'm going to turn that off and add in some other things. The limiter is nice. Uh, Maximus is nice. I use Maximus for mastering uh, pretty religiously in FL Studio. It's such a key plugin. I do miss this in when I use Logic. It's it's a really great plugin. Some of the things on like chorus, like just general chorus basic effects are pretty uninteresting. Like there's there's nothing really to look at. And if you're just starting out, this is all gonna be confusing. Um, it's just numbers, so it's harder to kind of get a feel for what you're doing on some of those things. But most of them are pretty good. The reverb is pretty good. I really like Convolver actually, which is like this kind of sound design reverb. I like the way it sounds. My favorite is the EQ. The EQ is great. The analyzer is nice. You, know, you can see what I'm doing pretty easily. Um, definitely enough to get you started. No doubt about that. Nothing to, to blow your mind, but, you know, it'll be enough for sure. All right, so that is what it looks like in FL Studio. Let's jump over to Logic. We'll start off with the, you know, how this looks right now. So we have a browser on the left side, just like FL Studio, the library. The main portion here is the the song arranger workspace. You can pull up that mixer down here, and that's it. And then you see the channel strip tucked in between these two here. You don't have that beat grid in the same way in Logic. There's ways to get to it. Uh, but it's not the main way you make a beat. And actually, speaking of making a beat, let's just get into that electronic drum kit. I like tight trap. And when I'm making beats in Logic, I just like using my MIDI keyboard. It's a lot easier. So let's just do that. I'm going to turn that BPM up to 140. And let's start cranking a beat out. Uh, not great, but not bad. You can also click notes by doing command click. I want that open hi-hat there. And then if I select all of it and quantize it, that's going to make it pretty perfect. And 
that hi-hat there was a little off. Everything else sounded good. You can also go in to this step sequencer, create this new pattern region. You can see it here. So I can just make kind of a similar beat. It's just not as easy for me, but does all the same things. This is a newer addition to Logic. Don't let anyone tell you that Logic doesn't have a beat grid, but that's how I do things. I usually just punch in with the MIDI keyboard. Let's add some software instruments. And the cool thing about this is the presets are on fire in Logic. Um, unlike FL Studio, this browser, this library here has all the presets arranged and it's all the different synths in Logic mixed together. And so if that's confusing, let me give an example. I'll pull up this analog bubble synth and it's alchemy. I'll pull up this micro pulse synth and it's ES2, a different synthesizer, but it organizes all these presets by the sounds. So you don't wanna click through a bunch of different synths and all their individual presets. You can just say, okay, let's look at all the different sounds I have for, you know, classic synth sounds. I've got a classic pad here. Let's do something similar to what we did on the last one. I'm going to select all on this pad and I'm going to quantize it. I didn't record that first note. No worries. I can just copy this one, copy it in there. All right, let's get that bass though. New software instrument track. We're going to go to uh, synthesizer. We're going to go to bass. Tight synth bass. Could do it a little differently than the last one, but let's try it. Let's quantize that as well. We want to keep that tight because it is a tight synth bass. Cool. A little corny, but I could hear that behind a, you know, a used car lot on a rap radio station. Uh, I'm going to pull up another beat. The one thing about Logic is that it's really good with audio. And so a lot of people, because the cool things about if I just load up an audio track, you'll see that it's got a lot of like voice presets. So I can do stuff like that. So if you're, if you're into the full song production, this is going to be really powerful. And a lot of people think that means, hey, this is good for rock music and alternative and indie acoustic singer songwriter stuff. However, it's still good with trap. I'll pull up a trap song. Um, I use this for a video when I made like a, a Jack Harlow kind of style beat that just to prove that you can do it in logic. And I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but it's a little bit more complicated than what we've got going on here. So let me load that up. And right away, you can see that we've got these sick effects and we'll get into that in a second, but let me just play this. Let me make sure you can hear it. Perfect. Um, so looking at these effects while well, we kind of listen to this in the background, these are a little bit better than FL Studio. Um, the EQ, super similar. You get that analyzer, you got the points. I honestly love them both equally. Um, what's another really good one? The compressor, it's not on in this instance. Oh, it's on here. This compressor is great. There's a lot of different settings. You'll see different videos of uh, big name producers using this compressor. The reverbs are also good. Silver verbs, the popular one. I like Space Designer. Uh, there's also some cool vocal effects, vocal transformer that you don't really get. Pitch correction, which is like a auto tune. You don't really get vocal transformer in FL Studio. I mean, sorry. Um, some cool limiters. Everything here is good enough. Some of the, the FL Studio stuff is like, yeah, don't, don't, don't use that. Even though it's not necessarily super complex, they sound good. Watch, if I just pull up the um, the chorus, it's three knobs, but the, the presets aren't bad, you know? I don't think this is on anything in particular. Uh, it's on the classic pad. So it's pretty subtle. You can hear it thickening up a little bit. But there you have it. That is the breakdown. 
that is how it all comes together. The differences between FL Studio and Logic, the workflows, whether you're looking to get one and you already have the other or you're just getting into music production and you don't know what to get, that's it. And there's more detailed videos on specific things like uh, vocals and building beats and different things on Logic versus FL on my channel, but this is a good overview to actually look at uh, some of the ways that they're different. If you want to check out some of my more just like opinions and um, initial thoughts on each software, you can go over to my old review, FL Studio verse is Logic 2020, and I have some of that there. So anyway, I'll keep it short. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.